All right, welcome ladies and gents. Today we are going to be doing our first lab for our pies, cheesecakes, and custards unit. Today we are going to be making pumpkin pies. We're going to be doing mini ones in our muffin tins here. Now, if you would like to double up this recipe, you can do this in a normal pie pan like like one of these, but that is up to you. All right. So first things first, let's go over the ingredients that you'll need. Uh, on your mise en place sheet, separate this into two separate recipes because you're going to need to make the pie crust and then you're going to need to make the pumpkin filling. So for the pie crust, we're going to be doing a biscuit method for the actual pie crust itself. We're going to be doing what's called a 3 to one pie crust, meaning one part water, two parts fat, three parts flour. So. For the fat component, you're going to need five ounces or 10 tablespoons of a combination of shortening and unsalted butter. Now, it's completely up to you what combination you wanna go with. Uh, the more shortening you add, the more tender the pie crust is going to be. The more butter you add, the more flaky and flavorful the crust will be, but that is up to you. Um, for the flour, we're going to need uh, 7.5 ounces of flour or one and a half cups with some extra flour on the side just to dust the counter with as we roll out the dough. 2.5 ounces or one fourth cup plus one tablespoon of water. Now, preferably, you would have this cold. This has been in my fridge for a little bit, so it stays nice and cold. Three-fourths of a teaspoon of kosher salt. If you are using regular table salt, iodized salt, uh, remember we talked about last week how you need to uh, decrease the amount of salt in the recipe, so I'd go with half of a teaspoon of iodized salt if you have that one tablespoon of regular white sugar and then optional here one teaspoon of vanilla extract this is up to you i'm going to actually leave this out but that is up to you now as far as the butter itself i have that actually in the freezer right now i've done kind of an equal mix of shortening and butter just so i can kind of have a midpoint between tender and flaky um, so that is the dry ingredients and that is all the ingredients for the pie crust. Now on the other side here, I have all of my ingredients for the pumpkin pie filling. Here I've got half of an egg. Here I have four ounces or half of a cup of pumpkin puree, uh, just, just out of a regular can here. two ounces or a fourth of a cup of regular white sugar. Now you can substitute this for brown sugar. Um, it just adds a slightly different flavor. So if you prefer the flavor of brown sugar, then uh, go with a quarter of a cup of one fourth of a cup of brown sugar packed or two ounces of brown sugar. A quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. Now, as far as the spices, now you can do any combination of spices that you would like here that goes well with pumpkin. Uh, what I'm using here today is I'm using half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then in this container right here, I have an eighth of a teaspoon each of ground nutmeg, ground cloves, and ground ginger. Um, you can use any combination. You can go with just cinnamon if you would like. Um, you can use a little bit of the pumpkin spice, uh, spice mixture that is, is sold in some grocery stores. Um, just your total spices should be anywhere between half a teaspoon and one full table, or sorry, one full teaspoon. It just depends on what you prefer. I kind of, I really like in my pumpkin pies to have the flavor of the spices really be forward in this. Um, again, that is up to you, um, but that's what I'm going with here today. Okay. And then finally, you're going to need three ounces or six tablespoons of 
your evaporated milk. Now, in your ingredient kit, I gave you your can of evaporated milk. Now, you cannot substitute regular milk for this, unfortunately. Um, the reason why is because, as you can see, the color of it is a little bit darker. That's because when they package this, they lightly cook these cans to pasteurize them, and the sugars that are in the milk slightly caramelize a bit and darken in color. So uh, you unfortunately cannot substitute this with regular milk. However, if you do not have evaporated milk or you don't know where the one uh, the can is from your kit, you can use regular heavy cream if you would like. Okay. Um, you In a pinch, you can go with half and half, but I would not use regular milk for this. Okay. And so that's all my ingredients for the pumpkin pie filling. Okay, let me just go ahead and get the butter. I'm gonna check on the camera real quick and then we will continue. All right, so I've got my butter, which has just come out of the freezer, nice and cold. You can see I have butter and shortening. So first step here is you're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Set that and let that go. So 350 degrees. Then step two is I'm gonna to mix together my flour, the salt, and the sugar. And I'm just going to mix that together. All right. Now we go into step three. Now, if you remember, this is called the biscuit method. I have very cold, solid, chilled fat, and I'm going to cut this into the flour mixture, either using two knives, a pastry blender, or my hands. So I'm gonna put that in. So remember, we are cutting the butter into the fat here. So you can do this a couple ways. You can either do it with your hands, You can take a pastry blender, like the one I've got here, or you can literally take two knives and kind of slice and cut the butter into about, like almost like the size of a pea. You don't want to see any big chunks of fat in here. You really just kind of want to break this up. Today, I'm going to show you how to use one of these, a regular pastry blender. The reason why is because I really don't want the heat in my hands to melt the butter at all here. So. Just going to start to break this up. Okay, if the pastry blender gets bunched up, I can just loosen up the mixture. Okay, now if you do not have a pastry blender, but you also don't want to use your hands here, you can take two knives and just kind of find pieces of the fat, the shortening, and the butter here, and just kind of cut it up. Now, in my opinion, both of these are a little bit of a pain, but if, it's, if you don't want to put your hands in the dough, I understand. Me, on the other hand, even though there's a risk of my hands slightly warming up the butter, if I work quickly, I should be up fine. So I'm going to just coat the fat in the flour, and then when I find a piece like this, I'm just going to rub it in, break it apart, and just kind of break up the fat pieces into small chunks. So I'm going to find little big, uh, big chunks of butter, fat, I'm just going to squeeze squeeze, squeeze, and break that apart. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do this until all the pieces are the size of a pea. And I'll, and we'll be back once I have this all finished and ready to go. All right, so now you can see the fat has been broken up into small pieces here. 
you see it's not like super chunk it has a few chunks but it's not like super big pieces like what we had before all right so now we're going to go to our next step here which should be step four which is you're going to stir in the water into the mixture now if you're using the vanilla extract you're going to add it here at this time now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pour in most of the water, but I'm going to leave a little bit behind here. And using a fork, I'm going to kind of just stir this together. Now this is just like when you guys made the biscuits. Okay, you're cutting in the flour, or sorry, cutting in the butter into the flour. And then you're going to stir it together. Now, once it gets to a certain point, you're just going to kind of get your hands in there and then lightly knead it together. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it onto the counter here. Okay, make sure that the camera is centered here. Yep, okay. And then I'm going to knead it together just a couple times. So, Press out, fold, press out, and you want to try to work somewhat quickly. Okay. And with each time I knead, you'll see the dough starts to get a little less crumbly and starts to come together. Now, when the dough starts sticking, like it is now, use a little bit of flour and just dust the counter. And then if it's really starting to stick, take a bench scraper and just kind of clean off the counter. Just need it a couple more times. Okay. Remember, you, you do not want to knead this forever like you did the uh, like you did the yeast dough. You're just kneading it together until it, it's formed into a ball like this. Okay. Now here, what I would recommend doing, it is an optional step, but it does make the process a little bit easier, is I would wrap this up in plastic and then refrigerate it for about 10 minutes or so. Because at this point, if you're using some butter, you'll see that the butter is kind of starting to melt a little bit with the heat from your hands. And when you're rolling this out, you don't want to have a lot of heat into the dough. You don't want the butter to be melting and spreading all over the counter. So I'm going to wrap this up, put this into the fridge to let it set for just a couple minutes. While I'm doing that, I'm going to get my pie filling ready to go. All right. All right. So while we're having the pie crust chill here we're going to make our pumpkin pie filling so we're on to step six so in a bowl or a container here you're going to add or mix together the pumpkin the sugar the salt and the spices so I have my here's my pumpkin Make sure i don't waste anything egg the salt the, there's the ginger cloves and nutmeg and there's the cinnamon and then the sugar Okay, now I'm going to whisk that together just until it's smooth. Now here, while you're not having to cream or cream this together like you would butter and sugar, we still want to make sure it's properly stirred and fully, you know, make sure the sugar inside is fully dissolved. If we don't take a little bit of time here, we'll get some grittiness in the final product, which, which isn't what we want. That being said, you only have to do it a little bit and then you're done. Okay, for step seven, now we're going to add in the milk. Now, it seems weird, why not just have added the milk in the last step? 
in step six? Why put it as your own step? Well, the reason is, is because the egg in our recipe had fat in it. This is mostly water. Fat and water don't like to get together. Uh, if you've ever had a bottle of vinaigrette where the oils kind of float to the top, it's because fat and water and oil and water don't like to mix. By incorporating it slowly, like I'm doing here, I make sure that the mixture stays smooth in an emulsion. Okay, so, there we go. It smells really good. All right. Now, I'm just going to set this to the side while I, would, while I get my pie dough out of the fridge. All right, sorry about the flashing in the camera. Don't know why it does that sometimes. Uh, if you have any questions as far as what happened during that stage, just let me know. All right, so I got my, my pie dough that just came out of the fridge. So it's slightly chilled. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll this out. So, I'm gonna use a, de a generous amount of flour here. Now, one thing you can do, if you wanna make this a little easier, is you can lay down a piece of parchment paper, put it down, sprinkle flour over the top of that, and then roll it that way. I'm personally not gonna go with that. Um, I think I'm okay with just using this, but that might make it a little easier if you're having real problems with the dough sticking. So what I'm gonna do here is you have two options on how to shape and cut the pie crust here. Now, what you can do is you can either roll this out fully and then use a cookie cutter or use something to cut out the individual circles that will go into your pie pan. Another way you can do it is by cutting this into six pieces and making and then rolling each individual piece. See, now I'm paranoid. I want to make sure that the camera is still you know, not uh, not flashing. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna roll out each individual piece. So to do that, I'm gonna cut the dough roughly in half, put one half of that to the side. And then I'm gonna cut each piece into thirds, or about into thirds. So. Now, yes, some pieces will be bigger than others. That's okay. So, I'm gonna put down the flour, sprinkle it over the top, press it out, and then using a floured rolling pin, I'm just gonna roll out the pie crust here, slightly rotating it. So, rotate, back forth, rotate, back forth, and make sure to occasionally flip it Now, here for this pie crust, I will say, probably want to use a little less flour than I did here. You can see mine's pretty coated in it. It's usually not ideal, but it'll still work. And then, you're going to line one of the muffin tins with the pie crust. So, just going to put this in. And if you have any excess pie dough kind of hanging over the edge, you can bake it, or you can bake the pies this way. However, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim off some of the excess here. And then I'll just press this into the muffin tin and straighten out the edge. Okay. All right, 
right, so I'll now don't waste this. Keep this on the side, and I'll go to my next piece of dough. So roll back forth, turn back forth. If it's starting to stick even slightly, turn the crust over into the flour. Back forth. I'm just gonna flip over. Back forth. Back forth. Okay. Now you don't need it to be a perfect circle. to get it into the muffin tin. Now I'll put it into the cup then press it up to the edge and then cut the dough just kind of trim. Then once I have it, I'll just kind of press it and form it, make it look a little better. But to be fair, it's a pumpkin pie. You don't have to really make this look beautiful. Okay, and then I'm going to keep doing this for all my pieces of dough. So when we come back, I'm going to have all of this ready to go. All right, now that I got all the pie crust formed, a couple things you can do if you kind of want to add a little decorative edge to it. You can take a fork and just press the outside of the dough and make kind of like a kind of striped pattern up at the top. That is up to you. Now, if you have a lot of excess dough over the top, you can fold it in on itself and then using your fingers, you can kind of almost create this sort of waved figure look. Again, obviously, you know, it's, we're not cooking this for a restaurant, so it doesn't have to look all pretty and everything. But then you're gonna go on to your next step, which is to pour in your filling. Now, slightly underfill these, so that way, you have enough for each one. Uh, I think I'm gonna be one short. Okay, so I slightly overfilled the one here. I will fix that before they go into the oven here. If you have one like pie crust left over here, that's okay. You can still bake it. You can dust this one with a little bit of sugar. That's fine. Or you can just honestly have a plain pie crust, just kind of dock it like this using a fork, just poke a couple holes in it, and then you'll be able to bake, you know, just kind of the shell and just kind of snack on that. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna transfer just a little bit of this pie filling over into this smaller one here. I'm then going to put it into the oven from anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Now, what I'm looking for, if you guys remember from yesterday's lesson, what we're looking for is that the center of the pies are going to be a little bit wobbly. Um, remember, we, this is a custard. Okay, the main liquid here is just the pumpkin itself, and we have eggs in there. So we want to pull this out when it's slightly undercooked. Okay, you don't want to overcook this for sure. Okay, uh, I'm going to take care of that, and then I'll see you guys in about 15, 20 minutes to show you what this will look like. Oh, by the way, just a quick bonus tip here. Here are all my trim pieces that I have. You, If you have a little bit of excess or extra filling, or you double up the recipe here, you don't wanna waste this. This can still be good. What you're gonna do in order to save this is just kind of fold on itself, press it a little bit, fold, just kind of knead it together. While yes, you will develop a little more gluten and these and this pie crust will be a little bit tougher, you won't waste anything. So I can just kind of form this together just like my other pie crust. And then once I have it formed together like that, I can roll it back out again and then form my next bunch of pies. 
Again, don't need to do this. You can throw out the excess if you'd like, but of course, if you don't want to waste anything, then this will be, um, then this is what you would do. Okay, the pie crust recipe that we had is enough to make one, uh, one regular pie, or as you saw, about six or seven individual pies. Okay, as far as the filling, like I said, you can double that up if you'd like. Um, that's up to you. Okay, I will see you back here when the uh, pies are ready to come out of the oven. All right, and here we have it. So we have our pumpkin pies. Now, as you can see, they're not perfectly done right now. If I shake it, you can see they're still a little wobbly. Okay, and that is perfect. That is exactly what we want. So uh, just a heads up here, I had to take a little bit longer in order to get it to this point. Um, so for mine, I know I gave you the time of about 15 to 20 minutes. I had to add it on like about five to 10 more minutes. So I would adjust on your mise en place sheet. Instead of saying 15 to 20 minutes, I would more say closer to you know, 22 to 25 minutes. Again, go with your eyes here. Um, if it's, once it start kind of, it starts to kind of wobble here, the outside of it is set, but the inside is still a little wobbly, then that is good, okay? With a little bit of browning on the outside crust here. Let this cool, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna let it cool for about 15 minutes. Uh, just at room temperature, then I'll put it in the fridge for at least two to four hours and then it is done. So uh, that is it. That is our pumpkin pies. Um, make sure you have your mise en place sheet filled out and uh, I would make sure that you have all the ingredients that you need since this is going to either be, uh, I believe this is going to be our last lab of the year. Uh, make sure that you are uh, checking your ingredient kits. Make sure you have all the uh, stuff that you need. All right, uh, that is it. I will see you guys back in class. Have a good one.